pocieszyciel, którego ja wam poślę od Ojca, Duch Prawdy, który wychodzi od Ojca, on będzie świadczył o mnie. Mój Ale i wy będziecie ty świadczyć. Mój ty 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 Non solo mi dire anche lo stesso futuro, e di mi corrige di rendere ancora, facendo ove conscienza mia gloria. Tutte le cose che hai il Padre sono mie, per queste vi ho detto che egli stesso vi farà conoscere la mia gloria. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise. 
Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come as the wind and cleanse. Come as the fire and burn. Convert and consecrate our lives to our great good and your great glory. Amen. In case you were wondering, what you just heard was the convocation of Episcopal churches at work, of which we by the grace of God, are the cathedral. You just heard these words in a number of those languages. The spirit which is coming will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. You might be forgiven for thinking this morning that the church is suddenly going through an adolescent growth spurt. Indeed we are, as you can see from the number of pews we had to reserve and keep all of you out of to accommodate all of these people who are about to be baptized, these seven people who are about to be initiated into the body of Christ. They're about to become a part of us, our brothers and sisters, our fellow ministers and co-workers, our care and concern. So it seemed to me that we owe them full disclosure about just what they are signing up for. Not just what it means to be a Christian, but what it means to be a part of the church. Especially a part of this church. Because there is no such thing as a Christian apart from the church. Now, all of you are sitting up front, and that makes it very hard for you to escape if you decide to do so after you hear what I'm about to tell you. But you should not think that this is all just a one-way gift to you. Yes, in baptism you receive the gift of new birth, but you also take on the identity of a Christian, of a person willing to be known as a part of this place. So maybe we ought to make sure that you know just what that means. I will start by making sure you know what we are not. We are not, and we do not claim to be, a group of people in possession of the only religious truth. We believe that something true has been revealed to us about God, something so true that it has changed our lives forever. But we believe that God is far larger than our capacity to claim ownership. We are not the Catholic Church. When we pray for the Catholic Church, we do so with a lowercase c. We mean the whole church, the universal church, the church to which we are connected in a faith deeper than the differences of denominations. But we are a different church from the church in Rome. And at the same time, we are not quite a Protestant church either. Just look at us up here in these gowns. We believe that there is something inspired, something that gives us glimpses of the holy in the traditions we have inherited. Our spiritual imaginings are inspired by the longings and possibilities of the Bible, but not limited by its words. We are in this place, this remarkable city, but we are not a church of this place. We cannot claim to have any significant part of the difficult and often deadly history of the Christian faith in France. Our story comes from a different beginning, and we are here because of a different history. But because of that, we know that George Washington never sat in our pews. And we also know that even if he had, no one out there would care a bit about it. So, what kind of a church are we? 
The first thing you need to know about your church is that we are a church in the middle. And not just by accident. We very intentionally take up a position in the middle in many ways. We are church in the middle between the Roman Catholic Church and the history of the Reformation. We struggle to hold a place of creative tension between one and the other. And that means we are often dismissed by both. We are a church in the middle between faith and knowledge. We do not deny the power of scientific discovery to reveal God's truth to us. But even as we do that, we are people of faith. Faith based not on evidence, but on trust. Trust in the promise that God has made to us, a promise that we believe reveals to us a truth that science cannot grasp. We're a church caught in the middle between France and America, and between French and English. We have been in this city worshiping in English for 163 years. Yet the people who came here and who gave form and shape to this community love this country and its people and its language, its complications and its contradictions. And we are once again asking ourselves, led by my brother Dumont, how we might be more welcoming to others if we found at least as many ways to welcome our neighbors as ourselves. Take it from those of us who have been doing this for a long time. Being in the middle can be a tiring thing. Being in the middle can wear you down. We are a bridge. But part of the reason a bridge stands up is that it is always under tension. And here is one thing more, maybe the most important and difficult thing of all. We are a church that follows Jesus Christ wherever that leads us. And what those of us who have done this for a while have learned is that the farther you go on your walk with him, the greater the chance that your faith will take you places you never thought you'd go. Like a kid from the middle of Michigan who is preaching to you from a pulpit in Paris. Because there is nowhere that Jesus will not go. No person Jesus will not reach. No shame Jesus will stop at. No beloved tradition that Jesus will not lay aside to share the urgent truth that love is the evidence God is still alive and at work in the world. So, my friends, this is not a church of the elite or the famous. This is not a church of the nation or of any nation. It is not a church for the perfect or the most theologically astute or for the purest. This is a church for the rest of us. It is a church for the rest of us who struggle in our faith and yet know that our faith is worth the struggle. The world does not believe that God is possible. But we know all things are possible with God. The world does not believe that love can prevail over brutality and force. But we know that love is the only thing with the power to bring justice out of our human failures. The world and Minister Schiappa think that the highest values are the values of the Republic. But we are subjects of another kingdom and another king, not of this world. The world does not believe there is anything at stake in what happens inside this place, but we know that each person who walks by the gate of this cathedral has an immortal soul that is the gift and image of God Almighty, and that it can be hurt and needs to be sheltered and defended. 
So friends, that is our task. And now, it is your task to provide a place that shelters those who seek and protects the possibility of the sacred in every human life. Today, you are not just joining a faith, you are joining a church. And my brothers and sisters, be in no doubt about this. This church, this church is called by God to change the world, one soul at a time. So, all of you, Graham, Fuad, Gael, Lawrence, Stella, Nina, Balthazar, will you all stand up? We, and now you, you, are not given the gift of the Holy Spirit for your own possession. We are given this gift for a purpose, a purpose not less than binding up those who have been wounded, weaving back together things that have been broken, breaking down hate and fear with a love that is both strenuous and unafraid. So now we want to hear from you. We want to know that you are ready or that you will help this child take all this on. And then we will pray for you and the Holy Spirit will come upon you because changing the world into the full possibility that God has dreamed for all of us is not easy and we need you alongside us to do it. So, are you ready? The candidates for holy baptism will now be presented. <laughs>